Have you ever observed that Aaron's head is streaming during the training core arc? If you pay attention to detail in Season 1 Episode 3, Aaron wounds his head and steam comes out. That was the result of healing. And you probably missed this one too, the moment when Raynar removes his hood for Annie so she can recognize him and not attack him inadvertently. These are nothing compared to the details I have found while re-watching Attack on Titan. I would be telling you about these small but impressive details that most of you haven't noticed, so without further ado, let's get started. While everyone was in the castle hiding from the Titans, Berthold Hoover was about to bite his hand in the moment. As you can see, this is because he's actually the Colossal Titan. If you replay the Attack on Titan episode from Season 1, you will find out that the Titans from Season 1 were actually the Eldian Restorationists. If you ever wondered, why didn't the scouts notice Zeke's Titan in Shingen Sheena? This is the place to be, let me tell you. Many fans thought this would be a plot hole as neither Zeke nor the Eldians from Marley were detected by the scouts while riding into Shingen Sheena. However, if you observe, there is a quick shot that displays a little pipe poking up from the Earth. Rewatching Attack on Titan again will undoubtedly shock your mind as you will notice numerous things, but want to know what I noticed? Even the POV shots in Attack on Titan are loaded with details. Remember the time when Sasha battled a giant to rescue a little girl? If you will examine attentively, you will find out that the Titan that Sasha fights in episode 27 is Connie's father. Did you know that in the anime, they gave us a small indication regarding Zeke's betrayal? Look attentively and you will observe that Zeke encouraged Raynor to go with Falco in the basement. Did you know that in Season 1 Episode 3, Berthold uses the Mountain Man story for his cover? If you Google, you will find out that the meaning behind Marley's name is quite detailed, and it is there for a purpose. Realize that Berthold's strange sleeping position is truly a brilliant comprehensive idea? Google the word, The Hanging Man, and you will learn that it is a classic tarot card that represents a pittura infamante, an old kind of punishment used for traitors in Italy. Berthold is shown sleeping in the same posture as the guy in the card, suggesting comparisons between the card's meaning and his betrayal of the 104th Training Corps. If you watch Episode 1 of Attack on Titan, you will find out that Carla lied about her legs to Eren and Mikasa to rescue them from Titans. In the moment when the Titan lifts her up, you will notice her legs straining and kicking. If you look closely, you will notice that a young Rainer, Annie and Berthold can be seen briefly in Episode 2 of Season 1, Attack on Titan. In Zeke's past scene, you will notice that a young Zeke is playing with a beast-like toy, which might be a detail concerning his Titan shifting skills in the future. Even the OVA episodes of Attack on Titan are very extensively detailed. This detail will only make sense to people who have viewed the special OVA episode named Ilse's Notebook. The episode follows Ilse Langer, a Survey Corps member who records her encounter with a talking Titan. Rather than immediately going for Ilse, the Titan which is talking bows down to her and calls her Lady Ymir. This is a connection to Ymir's history since she belonged to an Eldian cult devoted to the worship of Ymir Fritz. Berthold and the scouts, you will observe that the aim of Mikasa was incredibly precise and she struck the thunder spear straight into Raynor's eye. The detail I'm going to share is absolutely astonishing. You will be startled to find that both Eren and Mikasa activated their abilities to protect each other. Remember Tom Kassaver? You will be astonished to find that he appeared long before Zeke did. He also appears in episode 56 during Grisha's flashback. If you pay close attention to the Attack on Titan end credits, you will notice some interesting details. The raid on Liberio, for example, is hinted at in Season 3's end credits. Even Eren's dream in Episode 1 hinted at Willy Tiber's family, which is also a minor thing that most of you haven't noticed. Realize that the handprints of the Colossal Titan are still there. I think we can all agree that the Attack on Titan animators are on another level. In the opening of Season 4 Part 2, the main characters are getting ready for putting their clothing and gear on. However, instead of Mikasa putting on her signature red scarf, as in the Season 2 theme, she is shown pulling it off. This demonstrates how the main three, having traveled along the same road together for many years, are now torn apart and losing trust in one another. Did you notice that there are many views of birds flying across the screen in Season 4 opening? It is something that will also emerge throughout the rest of Season 4. Birds symbolize freedom in the Attack on Titan manga and anime, since they may fly anywhere they wish without barriers or titans preventing them. 
Talking about the introduction, did you notice these pictures in season 4? Like the very last photo in the OP. There is a footprint in the dirt where someone has crushed a butterfly, killing it and cutting its wings. This photo was a representation of the demise of the main character's innocence or purity. And also, the OP finishes with Eren, Mikasa, and Armin running up the flowery hill in their village. They start as tiny kids with enormous smiles and hearts of hope, and then Eren evolves into a teenager named Scout as he climbs the tree. When the main character turns around as a fully grown adult, he is alone, no longer with his longtime buddies Mikasa and Armin. Before Historia was made queen, there were subtle clues about her real identity all along, mainly in the way her friends and other people interacted with her and treated her as some sort of goddess. And now looking back, it kind of feels inevitable that she would have been made queen. In the first episode, Eren was sleeping beneath a tree. When he awoke, moments from his dream flashed before his eyes. Mikasa noticed him crying and inquiring what was wrong, but he forgot what his dream was about. When slowing down the scenario at the correct moment, one will immediately see that Eren dreamed about the Titans bursting into Shingen Shina and Wal Maria as well as the smiling Titan devouring his mother. Later on in the episode, the same incident happened, demonstrating that Eren's desire came true. Keith was the 104th Cadet Corps instructor, but have you noticed that before becoming a teacher, Keith was the commander of the Survey Corps? Over the next few years, his appearance changed dramatically to the point where Eren, Mikasa, and even the fans had no idea. When Eren first met Raynor, he didn't realize that he was one of his biggest enemies. This is just one of the cases of Raynor's identity being foreshadowed in the anime. Due to how similar Raynor appears to the Armored Titan, it is surprising that fans didn't recognize him as Eren's enemy sooner. Up until the conclusion of Season 3, the people in Paradise felt that they were all that was left of mankind. However, Raynor, as well as many of the other Titan shifters in the series, were from Marley, another country. When he disclosed his identity, his speech didn't make much sense to his enemies. However, after finding out the reality of the world, they realized what he meant. He was obliged to assault Paradise, assuming that the people within its walls were demons, only to find out that they weren't any different from him. Despite making friends with his teammates, he understood that he had to fulfill his job in order to rescue the world. At the conclusion of Season 2, Eren, Mikasa, and Hannes discovered the Titan who murdered Carla again. Hannes sought vengeance on her, but was assassinated in the process. Acting too wildly to think properly, Eren hit Dina. Surprisingly, the other Titans surrounded them and started to ignore the Titans and race towards Dina, killing her. Though it didn't make much sense at the time, after learning about the location and the relationship between the founding Titan and the royal family, viewers now know why Dina was killed. This hidden detail I'm going to reveal may blow your mind. Before Raynor admitted to becoming the Armored Titan, he was good friends with Eren. The two became each other's worst enemies when Raynor assaulted the Survey Corps and attempted to capture Eren who didn't understand how Raynor could have done such awful things to him. Years later, Eren assaulted Marley and informed Raynor that he knew why he had done what he had done earlier, and that they were the same. But did you know their struggle was foreshadowed a little earlier? Back when they were members of the 104th Cadet Corps, the two of them trained together. During practice, Raynor had to assault Eren. After he was defeated, he informed Eren that it was his time. Though this is obviously not what he intended, the foreshadowing was amazing. The detail I'm about to describe is a little dark. We all know how Marco died, which was harsh to watch. But did you know Marco's birthday is June 16th? Which you may realize is the exact middle of the year, or should we say halfway through the year. With the next part of AOT so near, I'm sure there will be a lot of hidden details in it, and I will try to cover all the details of it too.